Hey everybody, long time no see. How you been doing? Me? Life is crazy. But anyways, what we got going on is the Pawnee Air Force. We're up here in Massachusetts with uh, somebody that you may actually know. I'm gonna let y'all take a stab at that, take a guess at that, but I'm not gonna tell you who it is. But he's gonna help uh, fabricate some things for me. Custom exhaust, uh, custom uh, turbo uh, crossover, make things a little bit more efficient and also make things fit a little better. We're gonna address a couple of issues like the flex plate, the shifter cable mount, and I believe he's got a separate 4T80E that he's gonna give me, an older one that allows me to manual shift. So hold tight, because there's gonna be a lot going on in the next couple of days. All right, so we're here in uh, Minnesota with the LS4 King and uh, we're putting, uh, putting the old car on the lift here. We're gonna get started on a few things that we're gonna do is of course, we're gonna yank this engine out again, of course. Of course, we're a little bit more equipped here to do it. Um, we're gonna have to fabricate a custom crossover turbo pipe so that way it clears the 4T80 transmission. And then we're probably gonna do a little bit more work to the exhaust side back here so that way everything is happy and not too cramped um we're gonna figure out about getting an air to air intercooler in there we're gonna have to fix the heat disperser it got damage coming off the trailer and then a couple other things but we'll get there when we get there another point of concern was of course the shifter cable and its bracket um, of course, there's no mounting point on this transmission for this bracket, so we're gonna have to make a custom bracket for that as well, so that way we can properly shift. I also posted some stuff on Instagram about this. I don't think I updated y'all, but yeah, I got it fixed. I tapped this hole and just kind of put a fitting in there. Um, might end up changing that while we're here, just because, you know, there's there's a lot of PSI coming out of that little tiny hole. I don't want to blow off any lines. Figuring out for the uh, engine fans, um, they don't exactly fit in the bay anymore. The engine's gonna be a little bit more forward because of the transmission. So I just went on Amazon and got some cheapo little fans, see how those do. I might have to get a third and mount it in there eventually, but we're gonna see what kind of space we have after we're done here and see if that's something we can do. Of course, we're not gonna have a heater core anymore. We're not gonna have AC anymore. So that's a little bit weight that we're dropping as well. On the back end of things, we're gonna do a little bit more exhaust work on this thing because apparently that's not real pretty. And I agree. So we're gonna get to hanging that, getting that situated in a way that it's more neat, organized, tucked up and out of the way. Hey, uh. To whoever may need this nugget of encouragement, things will be all right, so quit your worry. I get it, the eyes can stack back against the wall, but even consider it such, no you'll stand. All right, so having the engine out of the car, of course, here's the plan. We're gonna remake a crossover pipe that the turbo is gonna mount to, and then hopefully do redo the downpipe from a two and a half to a three inch, and then hopefully rework the exhaust if we've got the time to do it. And then from there, we're gonna be able to pull the engine off the transmission, address our uh, flex plate issue that we got going on, not having the extra bolts and everything, making sure it's balanced. And then uh, the plan is to swap the subframe either for a V8 um, LS4 subframe or the tubular subframe, depending on time. Um, so right now we're getting parts together. We're getting some measurements and we're about to uh, get working on that mess. After looking at some of this exhaust stuff down here, it is, it is, it is a piece of work. Um, we're gonna get a couple of V-bands in here, get rid of, of this resignator. Uh, put another V-band here, a couple of 90s. He, he went through a couple of things with me, but get rid of this right here and maybe address some of this back here. It's a little, a little shoddy. On the transmission side of things, we're gonna replace some of these lines, rework it to make it look a little bit neater, a little bit more efficient. I can't remember if I've showed this before or not, but I installed a temperature sensor right here so that way we can get charge temps post turbo and supercharger. I think we're also going to eliminate the sway bar too. Apparently, um, we don't need it, according to the pros. 
So a little update about this transmission that y'all saw me fit to this engine. Um, this is, like I said, the 4T80E, but it's from a 2008 DTS Cadillac. Um, I have been informed that this one will not manual shift. So you can't like strictly stay in first or second or third. It, it's with the configuration set up, it, it'll only do automatic. It won't let me select shift. So here's what we got. A 99 to 93 4T80E transmission. This one's built a little differently. So that way you can select shift. I'm not 100% on the technicals on it. Honestly, I'm not a transmission guy. I don't know too much about transmissions, but um, this one specifically is what's gonna go with the car now. So I'm in the middle of prepping it for paint, cleaning it up, getting rid of corrosion, um, taking all the non-essentials off like the axles and whatnot. And um, then I'm gonna paint it, prime it, paint it, clear it, and let that dry. And then it's gonna go and mount the car. However, being that we're on such a uh, short time frame here and getting this thing done, um, the flex plate and torque converter are not in it currently. Uh, we were just mocking it up to the GXP subframe. We were gonna do tubular, but unfortunately we just don't have the time to do that. And these are pretty light enough as it is. It's an aluminum, so it's, it's pretty light. I mean, I can pick it up easily by myself. So the flex plate's almost back. It's Unfortunately, the stock one, I don't have time to order one. Actually, it just got here. Uh, he just pulled in. So um, he went and had the uh, stock flex plate rebalanced, drilled to meet the four lug pattern of the torque converter into this transmission. So that way we can have it secured in there properly. So without further ado, let's get this thing primed. All right, here's the finished color. It's kind of got like a, like a multicolor hue to it. I love it, it's beautiful. All right, so after a long bit of work here, we finally got the turbo and custom turbo manifold installed and all fabbed up. Custom downpipe, it's just like butter. Now, just to say that this um, wasn't easy to do, of course, I didn't do any of the fab work. I have uh, somebody here doing it for me and it was definitely a task. But uh, basically we route up from here, go into a Y, the Y comes out goes down and around to the rear power log and then out of the turbo into a catless downpipe, all three inch. So supposedly that this is supposed to make a lot more power compared to the ZZP turbo log because um, it just makes more sense. Uh, you have straight passages from both rear and front power logs going into the turbo hot side in order to get an equal amount of power so that way your, in, your uh, exhaust gases aren't combating each other. We've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. It's the last day of doing this, getting everything fabbed up. We're gonna do a three inch exhaust all the way to the back as well. But let's get a big round of applause in the comments for our fabricator. He put a lot of time and work into this and uh, a lot of wanting to quit. So uh, thank you. Unfortunately, we were unable to figure out the tubular subframe with the amount of time that we had, but uh, this is the V8 subframe. You can see that it's very accessible, easy to uh, maintenance. I can even drop my old pan. Another thing to address when you're uh, doing this swap is your uh, drain plug is no longer going to be accessible. Uh, it's going to butt up against this uh, transmission pan. So you're going to have to tap a new one right here, and that's going to be your new oil drain spot. All right, so going over the mounting situation here, we have three mounts that's triangulated. So we have one mount here, this mount right here, which is not what you normally would see on these engines. And then over here in the back, we have that mount as well. Being triangulated, that means that these are solid mounts and the engine is not going to rock and we do not need the dog bones up top anymore. Get rid of those, we don't need them. Take away the sway bar as well. We don't need that anymore either. 
And here we have our straight piped, no cat, no res, all stainless three inch. We're gonna put that up in the car. And then our down pipe here, which is also three inch. Because I have no cat, we eliminated the third bung for the downstream O2 sensor. So we have this one, which is gonna be for our wideband. And then the other one right up there that you can see, which is very accessible through here. There it is, right there. That was gonna be for our upstream for our engine. Man. That was a lot of work. We're back in North Carolina now. And uh, well, we're gonna leave the video off right here. We gotta get a couple of things done for it still. So we have to do some power steering lines, transmission lines, and a racing shift cable and shifter. So that way, because it's very little clearance to, to get to that shifter. There's no way we're gonna be able to make a whole bracket and stick it in there and mount it and not get in the way of the pipes and it looked good. And so I wanna thank y'all for your patience and for y'all hanging around over this lapse of time of not doing anything to it. So, so long for now. We'll be back, I promise. And until then, drive easy.